Previously on Iyanla Fix My Life. We are all here tonight because of one man, his courage, his commitment, his willingness to change. These men collectively have 87 children with 50 different women. That is 137 people who are impacted by choices and decisions that you've made. It's time for brothers to start fathering each other. 28 children, 17 different women. I'm struggling, I'm not gonna lie. Hold him up, Jay. I want him to know that you got his back. Abandoned yourself. Yes, it's not you violated it's yourself. Not Stand up, look around. You're not in this by yourself. So four children. Four children. How many mothers? Four different women. And you got a baby on the way. <laughs> What's the matter, mama? That's his mother. Oh, Jesus. His father died when he was seven. He tried to commit suicide when he was 17. <laughs> Hold it. I forgive you for not being who I needed you to be, who I wanted you to be. If you are empty, you're going to fill it with emptiness. If you are wounded, you're going to fill it with woundedness. And we have got to get healed. You've got to do your work. I'm going to do my job and stand up and step up to the plate for you and your son. Tonight, part two of the Ianla Fix My Life special event. The mega fix that hit a nerve with millions. That was the apology I never got. To see men stand up for men, that's powerful. This is my story sitting in tears. It was like nothing else I've ever witnessed on TV. We needed that space. I found myself crying. I am a child of a man who didn't know how to emotionally be with his children because he had so many. One more hour of breakthroughs. We call ourselves men, but we make boy decisions. It's not about fault, it's responsibility. And somebody bring me my son. Forgive me. Next. Tonight, we are continuing our powerful conversation with men who have fathered children with many different women. Last week, we witnessed healings and breakthroughs from men who have never talked about what it feels like to fail as a father, a partner, and the devastating effects it has had on their children. Tonight, we are digging deeper. We are listening. We are learning. Jay is here along with some of the men who helped us start this conversation. Jamani, Ryan, Nathaniel, Terrence, and John. My friend Jeff Johnson is a youth advocate who has walked in these men's shoes. Jeff, thank you for being here. Thank you. Jeff, what did you do? I, I just wonder, and, and a couple of y'all brothers are saying that you're engaged now. Do you value this woman independent of you? Because I heard a bunch of y'all say, I used women for this. I got women to get me apartments. I got women to get me cars. Are you trying to make this marriage save you instead of being the man first? Because that's what I'm worried about. You're, you're engaged. How would you answer that? My brother, I would answer that as she put God first. All the other women in the past didn't put God first. So that's the big difference between me and her, that I value the way that she's treated this relationship, and that's given me, instilled in me, you know, more so, so I can, that's what made me uh, propose to her, because she's way different than anyone else. Okay, so I, I still don't hear you saying yeah. what you are. I, right. I hear you saying, I hear, I hear your value for her. And I think that's important. And I hear you saying that she's helped open your, your eyes. Because it's time. It's time. I, I have daughters, and God forbid any man will come in their lives to do the same things that I did to other women. It's going to happen. Look at me. That's the law of cause and effect. Anything you do, bam, it's going to have an equal and opposite reaction. Bam, it's coming. Bam, it's coming. In Christian world, they say the sins of the father or the sins of the mother. It is coming. She is going to bring who you were when she was conceived in her mother's womb. That is going to be the first man she brings home. I'm telling you, all of you, all of you, that's who it's going to be. So what I hear Jeff saying to you is you got to be 
manned up and fathered up in your soul so that when you see it, <laughs> you, you know how to deal with it. Before I married my wife, I knew I was different. I knew that I was willing to do things that I had never been willing to do before. And so I, I just hope, brother, that, that you want to make this transformation for you. Because if you don't, it's just a matter of time. How long have you and her been together? April will be three years. Hmm. I, 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 here's what I would ask you, and you know, I, I love a sister woman found a man to get married to. I love her, so she getting ready to not like me at all. <laughs> because I'm going to say to you, before you marry her, you need to find out what promise you represent to her. Because if she's not clear about that, you'll be breaking the promise and won't even know it. Can you hear me? Yeah. What do you know now that you didn't know when you walked in here? <laughs> Number one, I can't cry on national TV anymore. <laughs> you can't cry? <laughs> Too late, ha <huh? laughs> But But um, honestly, I would say I have to acknowledge the mistakes I've made in the old me and let him die in order for me to be the man that I want to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and before you get married, do that. I have to. Be before you get married, do that. Because with the depth of wounding, long and extended periods of pain will render you unconscious. Yes. So I don't know how many men are unconscious about who they are, what they do, how they feel, what they need, what they want, and they go in and out of relationships. But if you are an unconscious man, trust me, you got an unconscious woman. So you want to make sure you understand the promise that you are to her before you marry her. We can't do nothing about the baby. The baby's coming. If I had a big old shopping bag full of condoms right now, I would... But see, that's about a discipline and a commitment you have to make to yourself. No more unprotected sex. It's just not good for you, baby. It's not good for you. What do you know now that you didn't know when you walked in here? For a very long time, I guess maybe I didn't use these words, but I had enslaved my mentality to uh, not own up to the ownership I had with my first set of kids, mom, and the brokenness that I brought to my marriage prior to actually getting married, and some things that I brought into the marriage and I had yet to heal. What are you going to do different when you leave here? Well, I've always um, held myself accountable and had personal responsibility, but I think it's important, um, for one, um, there's some more apologies that need to be in order. How about forgiveness I need to ask for? Because being sorry and apologizing is one thing, but forgiveness takes it to a whole nother level. The forgiveness definitely needs to be there. Um, me asking for forgiveness um, from that individual. Um, but I asked for forgiveness a long time ago from God, and I think that's why I have been able to sustain as long as I have. Have you forgiven yourself? I have. Beloved, what do you know now that you didn't know when you got here? You are a totally different color. You just look, you still black, don't get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't green or nothing like that. <laughs> I just, for one, I mean, a lot of people, men do it too. We might use somebody to get over who we can't be with anymore. You fill the brokenness with a body. You know, you attempt to. Fill the brokenness with you, a body. You know, and that's what they did. And I, and I know what it was. And I know, and it's just like, I'm, I'm just, I'm more sympathetic to it now. And I know that's what it is. So I need to get back <clears throat> into my word. And I need to do some fasting to do some, um, some purging, actually, you know, to be honest. I, I know what it takes. I know what to do. It's just I haven't, I haven't, haven't done had it. the discipline I, to do it. I haven't, I haven't done it. Just being um, I haven't rebellious. had the discipline yeah, to do it. Yeah, I mean, it. that too. Don't set up obstacles and barriers that will prevent you from having a new experience in a new way. Because I sense that you've been on your own, doing it your own way. Be ye renewed by the transforming of your mind. 
came from. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. Can I tell you? It came from the plantation. It came from the plantation. I never wanted this. This is my son. Forgive me. Forgive me. Now, here's what I want us to get. That these men, collectively, have 87 children. That includes Jay. With 50 different women. It was the most impactful show that I've ever seen on television. I found it profound and candid and vulnerable and transparent. I'm a father of 28 children. And I wake up every day. And I wake up every day. And I feel... I feel, I feel helpless. Just to see these men open up and share their own struggles, it gave me a newfound compassion and empathy for them that they are human and they hurt as well. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me. A mother can heal your heart. A man can father you. Somebody come stand with him. Your elder, let the elder come stand with him. Stand with him. Can you come down here with me, beloved? Breathe. Get his back. Turn around. Turn around so he can feel your back on his back. So he'll know you're with him. Talk to me. This is real difficult because, like you said, it is perpetual. And, and you don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. from. Can I tell you? It came from the plantation. Came from the plantation. I never wanted this. What didn't you want, beloved? How many children? I have three. And my wife has two. Well, tell me what you didn't want. I didn't want the experience of not being able to be whole and to be present because that's all I ever wanted. Yeah. My father took care of us, but he wasn't there. I mean, he didn't heart. live in the house. Yeah. What do you need right now? How can we make it better right now? Exactly what you're doing. What do you know now that you didn't know when you walked into this studio today? That I did not have to cop out it, that if I only believed that things could change. I mean, because I didn't believe that. Do you believe it now? I know that. Now you know it. And without, with knowing, we don't need belief. We don't need belief. Come, Baba. Come here for me that this elder was able to stand with you and stand for you. Yeah. OK. First of all, thank you so much. Wait a minute, hold up. Yes, ma'am. This is what I love, forgive me, that in my front row, I got polka dot socks, striped <laughs> socks. You know, I, Style. hey, the fashionista, <laughs> right? Go yes, ahead. Uh, first of all, my name is Thomas Hibbler. I'm here with my dad, who's actually uh, fighting prostate cancer. Hi, dad. So just keep my, keep my dad lifted up. You know, I, I came here for a TV show, and I got something so much more. As men. As a man, speak for yourself. As a man. I. I was taught how to be hard. And I know my brothers have been taught how to be hard. To cry in front of another man means you're soft. Used to be. Used to be. Uh -huh. But because I've been able to give, forgive myself so that I could grow, to forgive my mother for not being there, because my mother left me. And she left my brothers and my sister. And my dad manned up. You know, I have, I have five children, four biologically, and a stepson who I don't call my stepson. He's my son because I'm helping to raise him. So I don't have stepchildren. I have five children. And going into that situation, I was broken and I was unhealed because I didn't know how to forgive myself because I didn't know what it looked like because I was never taught. But through the grace of God, I was able to grow up and forgive myself and forgive those who hurt me because I understood in order for me to get to where God is pushing me, I have to let go. Yeah. 
And, and this was so beautiful today to, to see other brothers. What are you taking home with you? What are you taking home with me? Is? What I'm taking home with me today is that I need to share who I've become mm -hmm. with other men. Thank you. Okay, tell me, how old are you, beloved? Uh, I'm 21 years old. Oh, you look very young. Oh, okay. You. The black don't crack. Go on. Uh, uh, I, I just want to say um, that I am a father, too. Um, of how many children? Uh, just one right now. By how many women? Just one. one. Oh, one child. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what did you learn today that'll help you? Um, what I learned today is just I, I learned strength and I've learned wisdom because um, when I had my daughter, I didn't even know her mother for six months before she got pregnant. And, and the first thing we did when she did get pregnant was break up. And all I did was just try to be out there with anybody that I could because I was upset that I was having a child at 19 years old. Let um, me ask you a question because it's close to you. How old is your daughter? She will be two in January. Okay. When the young lady said to you, I'm pregnant. Go back there and tell me what happened inside of you. What did you say? I just felt like we weren't, we, I wasn't ready. I didn't have a job. But what did you say inside yourself? Did you say, damn, or did you say, oh, great? <laughs> did you say, oh, sh oh. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to feel. It was like a, a, a life is about to get real, real quick type feeling. And next thing you know, we break up. Cause she was broken. My my my, mom, my mother and father wasn't together. Her mother and father wasn't together. So two broken children made a child. And are you in your daughter's life? Yeah, my daughter lives with me. Um, not with her mom. Wait a minute. Not with her mom, or do you live with her mom? No. I'm getting all up in no, you. No, uh, I, I live with my mom, and my daughter lives with me. It's it's a, it's honestly it's a mess right now, and that's why I really want to thank you all because. Um, okay, I, wait a minute. Hold up. Y'all need to get him. Get him right now. You understand? He's got a two-year-old daughter that will be looking for one of him in 16 years. You got fathers now. You got him. You, you, you got to. Just don't, I don't even want to hear nothing else. Just don't say nothing else. Because we got his mother raising his child. I hear you. I'm going to give you to the men. Okay? Beloved? As I sat here, I, I listened to a lot of things. I am the oldest of seven siblings. None of us have the same mother and father. I am, um, unfortunately, four suicide attempts on my life. I have five children by three different women. And one of the things that I've learned, though, is first how to forgive myself and forgive them. In addition to that, I think me not having a father caused me to be, I fell in love with my children. And so... I never miss field trips. I'm going to leave here and go on a field trip. Never miss basketball games or anything like that. I grew up right here in Inglewood. And one of the things that I learned, and as I share with my brother here, is that we have to make a decision to live life from where we are, not from where we came from. Or not from where you want to be. And not from where you want to be. Right where you are. As black men, we come into this world with our guards up. We, we got to swing all the time. And when you see brothers like this with multiple women, with multiple children, it's because they're seeking validation. We cannot underestimate the impact that our history and this experience has had on the formulation of our DNA and our emotional pathology. You're not a stud in the field making babies for the master to sell. You're not. I have for my father, my grandfather, all of my brothers, I want to say that I'm sorry for entering your life as a broken man in our home. As I watched this episode, I could not help but to be moved to tears. For those men to be so courageous to tell their stories on national TV was incredible. I love you. I respect you, and I'm going to do my job and stand up and step up to the plate. You already are. For you and your son. And we all love you. It just gave me hope that, you know, women, men, whoever's hurting, we all need help. I look at the chart here, and I am one of the kids that are down there on the bottom. 
my biological father has 10 or 11 other children that um, we don't necessarily all get along with. So I appreciate the brother here acknowledging that not only do men need to heal with their children's mothers, but they need to help the children heal within each other. Um, so but what do you I want to thank Jay for? I want to thank Jay because even though he wasn't talking to me and he was talking to this young man's mother, and he said to her, I, I apologize, and, and you made a commitment to move forward and do right by your children. I have a children's father who has not been around for their entire lives, and I might not never hear that apology. Okay, well, hold on. Before you get the apology, why do you have a father of children who is not around? Because what did was, he promise you? I was a broken was... woman, uh -huh. and I laid with a broken man. Okay. And so when he gave her that apology, even though he wasn't speaking he to was me. He was speaking to you. Because you're not your I sister's said. keeper, you are your sister. He's not his brother's keeper, he is his brother. There's only one spirit. So you can, I can say to you, please forgive me. And know that I'm talking to my son and my grandson. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to say that, you know, I, that created some healing in, in me today that I don't think every I would have ever otherwise gotten. Every woman. So thank you, Jay, for that. But here's what I want to say to every man in here. You have got to master the craft of forgiveness. It's not just about forgiving your behavior. It's about forgiving your thoughts and your beliefs and the patterns and pathologies present in your DNA. So you all, all need to go online and sign up for my forgiveness Woo! course. Now, that wasn't a commercial, but I want you to master the art of forgiveness. I really mean it. And this is something that you can do in the privacy of your own home, because everybody ain't going to be able to stand publicly and say, I lied to 50 women as I slept with them because I miss my daddy. You've got to be able to forgive that. Yes. I'm so proud of that brother right there because the first week of watching him, he was, he was demonized. I didn't like him. I thought he was the opposite of what a good man should be. I'm seeing the good in this brother now. I'm seeing the good and greatness in all of these brothers now. And it's a beautiful thing. I want to say that as black men, we come into this world with our guards up. We we got to swing all the time. We got to prove ourselves by getting advanced degrees and wearing nice suits and looking good and speaking proper. But it doesn't help you heal. It doesn't help you. We got to throw punches all the time. And when we throw punches, we get shot and we get killed. And when you see brothers like this with multiple women, with multiple children, it's because they're seeking validation. They just want to be validated. Yeah. That's all. I understand. And it's just frustrating to see the world demonize us. And black men, we don't have adequate, fulfilling rites of passage. Yeah. Yeah. I feel so fortunate. I feel so fortunate because my father taught us rites of passage. And Ayanla, we don't understand when until we become. Today. Until we, until right, today. When we become a man. Yeah. A lot of black men, men, period. They never know the day that they become a man. Yeah. In the Jewish tradition, they know. They know it. But black men, you got 25-year-old, 30-year-old black men acting like Black children. boys. boys. Yes. Yeah. OK. So here's what I want you to do. Every man in here, I have a charge for you, that we are no longer going to affirm what was. Yes. We are going to speak into existence what is required. So let me tell you what I heard you say. What I heard you say is that I am going to become a demonstration to, to, to men. Because trust me, I'm half Latin, part Latin, part Native American. It's in those communities also. I am going to become a demonstration to men to teach them how to validate themselves so they can stop swinging in the world trying to prove themselves. Now, that's what I heard you say. Yes, Isn't exactly, that what you said? That's exactly, that's what, exactly I said. what he and, said. And the level of vulnerability that these men showed today, that warms my heart. But can I tell you, in addition to being vulnerable, before it was vulnerable, it was intimacy. See, when I'm looking in your eyes, that's intimacy. That's intimacy. And the intimacy is what makes you vulnerable. You good? You're not a stud in the field making babies for the master to sell. You're not.
Act like you know who you are. Close your legs. Stop it. And if you see somebody else doing it, pull her up. Sister girl, come on, let me pull you up. I forgive you for... I forgive you for tearing me down. I forgive you for telling me you wish you could leave me after daddy died. I forgive you for yelling at me every day, no matter how many times I came home cleaning the house. I forgive you for every, every moment I hated because you hurt me. I forgive you for every time I hurt myself. I forgive you. I love you. I don't know what I'll do without you. But I forgive you for not being who I needed you to be. I forgive you for not being who I needed you to be, who I wanted you to be. Yeah, yeah. This completely hit home for me. I learned um, to forgive my parents for for the choices that they've made. Hug your baby. extended forgiveness um, to myself. Stand up. And you, how old are you, beloved? Um, I'm 24. Um, I have a better understanding of what women want from me. And now, I yes, yeah. and I appreciate you for that because yeah. know that you are a promise to them. Yes. And if you lie to them, you break the promise, and they will get mad at you. Yes. Did you get you, you got that? Okay. How many children? Zero. Good. Yes. Get the condom bag. <laughs> None until you are married. And, and not love. married, but what, of a man. Clear yeah. about who you are as a man. I wanted to be in love before I had one. Yeah, in okay. love with you. Yeah. I want you to be in love with you. I want you to love you so much that you would never dishonor yourself by lying to a woman. Well. Can you hear me? Well. OK, that's how, all right? How we doing? Good. You good? good? You had a question earlier. I want, what I wanted to say, just Ryan, like when you talked about, Stand your mother up. talked about, you know, you having lost your father and you began to weep. I lost my mother when I was a child. And I don't know that people necessarily understand how to com compartmentalize the sort of emotion that comes with that. And when she talked about sort of everything that you did to try to move past it, like, I was, you know, trying to keep my makeup good because we were... But okay, what did I you do it. as a result of being a motherless child? I cried and I cried. And I wanted to ask you, like, because I mean, yeah, I'm cause crying now. because I'm a motherless now. child. I, I, I cry now. And I just, how do you move past that? You don't move past it. You acknowledge it and bring it with you. You don't move past it. You don't move past it. My challenge was my mother died when I was two and nobody told me. So I grew up thinking my stepmother was my mother, but my soul is not ignorant, and there was never the connection. Mm. So I spent my entire life never feeling like I fit, never feeling like I belonged, and everybody's telling me it's fine, it's, but my soul knew different. And it wasn't until I was 30 and could say I am a motherless child. And as a result of being a motherless child, I've spent time, jumped in and out of people's bed, I've lied, I've stolen, because I didn't know who I was. You know, men are male, boy, man. Women are little girls, big girls, <laughs> and then we become women. So you don't leave it behind. You acknowledge it, you give yourself permission to hurt, you let your heart break, and then you bring it with you. So now today when I say I'm a motherless child, I'm not a motherless child. I'm a motherless child. I got to go to the next section. There's too many women over here. <laughs> Stand up. Look at your little precious face. How old are you? I'm 18. 18. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what you learned, what you heard. I'm, I don't have a dad either. Like, I had a stepdad when I was younger, but my grandfather is the closest connection to me that I have. 
Like, um, I talk to my grandfather all the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I need some money or if I need anything. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just... Men and I, money. I love no, that. I'm, I'm just being for real, because that's the only yeah, person yeah. that I can really let, talk to. Let me ask to, you this as 18-year-olds. You know? What do you want to say to these fathers who are not in connection with their children? You, as still teetering on boy and man, what do you want to say to men who are not in touch with their children at 18? What do you want to say? Uh, I mean, it's, it's just not cool. Look at like, me. Look at like, me. Uh, do you need your father? Yeah, say, yeah. I needed my father. Yeah, I needed my father. And he wasn't yeah. there. And he wasn't there. And as a result, and as a result, I sometimes feel I sometimes feel uh, lonely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Where's my son? Somebody find my son. Somebody bring me my son. This is my son. Forgive me for making you a repository for my anger. And forgive me for any way that my anger constructed or impacted how you see women. I think that the moments that stuck out to me were this idea that I am not my brother's keeper, I am my brother. Because see, a mother can nurture you and nourish you, but you got to have your eye on another man That's right. yeah. to know how to do this. Yeah. I just and that I will stand with him, stand next to him, stand back to back with him to ensure that he has the support so that the weight of the loneliness and isolation uh, does not get him. I'm really, really proud of you. I'm sorry for the damage that I did. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I was emotionally and verbally abusive. I used you as a container for my rage. When Ryan's mother said, I'm sorry that I made you a container for my rage. I would like to think that that probably resounded with mothers all over the world. I curse God that he gave me sons because of the rage that I had. <laughs> you are not responsible for my rage. For because my of this show, I'm really inspired to change the way that I parent, to make better decisions, to think before I act, to realize that everything that I say and everything that I do is going to have some kind of effect on my child. Okay. Real quick, real quick. I'm just say at one point this was too intense. I left and I was about to leave and your son is what stopped me. This was one of the most powerful experiences I've ever had because it helped me realize that a lot of the decisions that have been made in some of the places that we in is not all our fault. It's not about fault, it's responsibility. It's not all our no fault. fault. No whining. Right. Ownership and responsibility. Two things. Number one, I realized that I can I can sit in a man's seat, but I'm not gonna be a real man until I can pick up my phone and have a model to call. And number two, I just really want to acknowledge you because I've been asking God a, a question for a while now about relationships. And when you spoke and you and your son spoke, I realized why I have not been able to find my good thing. And it was a hitting moment. I got to go home and call my mother. That's right. And I thank you for that. I want to say this. Um, coming at, from a tribal people that I do, the Jisleki people and the Lakota people as Native Americans, we're tribal and we're proud of it. We ate teepees and chased buffalo and all that kind of stuff, okay? And I, this is that part of me speaking now. You know, one of the things that my grandmother, who scrubbed floors and cleaned food and washed toilets and made shrimp salad for rich people's dogs in Scarsdale, New York, this is the one thing that she said to me that I want to leave you with. This would be my last spoken word. To help you understand who you are and the importance of who you are. This is a Lakota tradition and it says, there is only one man and his name is all men. There is only one woman and her name is all women. So who you are as a man has to be a representation and a demonstration that all men can follow. And who we are as women 
has to be a demonstration and representation of all women. Y'all didn't come here because I have weaves and nails and wear thongs. You came here as a result of 34 years of being a demonstration of what it means for me to be a, a woman of color in this country. 34 years from tapping the power within. So there's only one man, his name is all men. There's only one woman, her name is all women. There's only one child, and its name is all children. And we are responsible to look out for each other, to take care of each other, and to hold on to each other. That's Lakota. This is my son. <laughs> Forgive me for making you a repository for my anger. The anger I had toward my father, the anger I had towards myself. Just forgive me. And forgive me for any way that my anger constructed or impacted how you see women. Forgive me. Forgive me. I think that for all of the men who have multiple children with multiple women, that you, your first step is forgiveness. Yeah. You've got to forgive yourself. Yeah. You have to forgive yourself for whatever it was. And you do that in the privacy of your own home. What I know is that when you infuse forgiveness into the healing process and you allow yourself to become aware of it and to speak it out loud, you create miracles. It's, 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 it's drain out. It cleans your life out. And not only does the forgiveness clean you out, it reaches out and it affects other people. And they see you different and they hear you different. Because when you're standing in a place of forgiveness, even when they get mad at you, you hear it with an open heart. This all started with you. <laughs> see. Do you understand what I'm saying when I say this is, it ain't even about you no more? Absolutely. When you sent me a letter, you had no idea that this 25-year-old father of five was trying to kill himself. This ain't even about you. What do you, what do you want to say? <sighs> My heart broke watching his pain. It's your pain, Jack. Ab absolutely. I saw myself, and my biggest fear at that point was my sons. Like, it just gave me a different perspective on everything. And um, as men, we got to own it, man up, and step up. That's right. That's it. I just acknowledge you for your courage. If I had to say, whenever we get ready to do a show, I say to my producers, what's the fix? Because if I can't see the fix, there's, there's nothing for me to do. The fix here is to, I see, is to give yourself permission to tell the absolute truth about what you feel, what you need, what you want, who you are, so that your Brokenness doesn't become your modus operandi. <laughs> I think the fix here, not just for you because your children are here, is as men, as people, as adults, we have to be willing to discipline our mind so that our body won't be engaging in bad behavior. <laughs> Discipline the mind. I, th I think the fix here is to own ownership and responsibility. We, as African American people, I'm half Latin, half Af well, a third Latin, a third African American, a third Native American. So I'm just a mutt. <laughs> so I've got it coming from all areas. 
And I think that we cannot fail to recognize the impact that our history and this experience has had on the formulation of our DNA and our emotional pathology. We, 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 we can't underestimate that. You're not a stud in the field making babies for the master to sell. You're not. You are not. But it's in your DNA. It's in your DNA. And we are not a, a property for someone to breed. Your grandmother sold her babies from the field so that you could get an education. Act like you know who you are. Close your legs. Stop it. And if you see somebody else doing it, pull her up. Sister girl, come on, let me pull you up. We, we, we got to take ownership and responsibility for our past and our present and our everyday behavior. We just have to. We have to. And, and we have to stop making some things important to us. Looking good and impressing people can't continue to be important to us. Right. Understanding as moms that our sons are watching us. And if we let a man in our house beat us, leave us, cuss us, that our sons are watching that. Can you hear me? And I thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for watching. This experience from beginning to end, like, has now left me with a renewed sense of self and self-purpose and self-worth. I feel like now I can actually grow into the, the great man that I really am and was meant to be.